Hey guys, Kingpin here. Welcome back to today's video. Thank you all for tuning in last time, and welcome to episode 2 of the series. Uh, since last time, I have decided to call the series Tailcraft. Let me know in the comments what you guys think of that name. Today's episode, we have three goals in mind. The first thing that we're going to do is head over to that pillager outpost, try to be stealthy, and see what they had in that cage. Our village only has one iron golem right now, and we could really use a second one. Or an LA would be helpful for when we do our second goal, which today we're going to build our starter house. And it's not going to be any starter house. A village needs a good town hall, and a good keep, so that's where we're going to be living for now. It's not going to be crazy fortified to alert the pillagers quite yet, but it's going to be sturdy enough. And finally, we're going to do some light exploring and see if we can't find a second village and maybe establish an alliance. I really hope you're going to enjoy today's video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and leave comments for what you want me to do in the world next. I'm really curious to hear. Now remember, we're not here to fight or kill anybody right now. We're just trying to see what the threat is and who we have to rescue. Because as you recall in episode one, they have a cage. And inside of those cages, one of two things can spawn. Iron golems, which are useful for protecting our villagers, and alleys, which are useful for us for building and gathering resources. See that guy with the banner right there? He was up on the top. That's a pillager captain. And for us, they're the mo right there. And for us, they're the most dangerous ones. Because if we kill a captain, we're going to get an effect called Bad Omen. And if we wander into a village with a Bad Omen effect, it'll start a raid. And all of the pillagers are going to come and try to ransack our village, which we just worked last episode to defend. Let's hope they don't see us. We need to figure out what's in that cage. There's too many of them to fight. And if even one of them sees us, they will all follow us home. It looks like there's an alley. Maybe two, but no, it looks like just one. There's a chance we can get in there now and rescue it. But I don't want to risk it. Let's see what else they have around the side. Remember, the pillagers don't know that we're here yet. They have never seen us before. Hmm. Those target blocks coincidentally are about villager height. It looks like they've got some dark oak wood right there. If we can get that wood out from under them, then maybe that'll stop them from constructing more outposts. There's no point in going in the outpost right now. All they have up there is one chest with some pretty mediocre loot, if I'm being honest. Except I think an armor trim can spawn up there. Let's get out of here, though. No point in starting a fight we can't win. But now we know what we're fighting for. We've got to rescue those alleys before they get turned into vexes. One thing we didn't do a whole lot in the previous episode was explore our map. And it looks like a lot of this world is going to be water-based. So let's take a quick spin in this boat and see what we can find. Let's try another time-lapse. Worked well last time. Hey, another village. Thanks for the dock. Now we just need to find a place we can sleep before the zombies start spawning and killing all of them. Ooh, a spruce forest too. I don't think we've found spruce wood yet. So we have another village that's very close to home. That's good. I found something really interesting with this village upon looking at it again. This village has more than one library, and more than one librarian, but only a handful of farmers compared to ours at home. I think that this village is focused more on books and studying and knowledge as opposed to agriculture and other manual labor jobs. And seeing that they're near the coast too, with plenty of access to ink sacks, that means they can make lots of books and quills to keep their studies afloat. It's interesting. Maybe our village in this one can have a trade route, and we can bring them food 
maybe offer some protection once we industrialize in exchange for some enchantment books. Something to think about. Meet you back home. And we're back again. Now we're going to build a starter house, like we said in the intro. And I'm not going to lie, guys, this is the most nervous I've ever been before playing Minecraft, because this is my one and only opportunity to make a good first impression on how I can build. No inspiration pictures, no tutorials, I am going to make a house from scratch. Let's go. So when I build, I always build in the 5x5 style. And if you don't know what the 5x5 style, it basically means a support block, three walls, support block, as you can see what I'm doing right now. It's one oak log, one, two, three cobblestone. If you're going to make a window, add it in the middle one so it stays symmetrical. So again, it's one oak block, three cobblestone, one oak block. The two, the three, that equals five, five by five. And if you build in the five by five style, you can easily expand it. You could do five by five, five by five, five by five, and now you're at a 15 by 15 style and it stays a square. It's symmetrical, so you can have doors and windows look really nice. The only thing you can't do is add a double door. But the five by five style is nice because it's so expandable and you can keep things in an order and make them look really professional and keep it simple at the same time. So if you're new to building and new to Minecraft, I would highly recommend trying this 5x5 style. Slow down the footage if you need to watch. I'm no professional builder, but if you ask one, it will all tell you the exact same number one tip in Minecraft. And that is, if you screw up, if you do something wrong, do not be afraid to fix it. If you just saw right there, I messed up the 5x5 style. I did only two cobblestone blocks in between the logs. It took me a little bit, but it's easily fixable. Right there, I just put two instead of three because I messed up the dimensions somewhere. If that ever happens when you guys are building, don't be afraid to just take your pickaxe and mine it. It takes two seconds and it'll make your builds look better in the end. After we've got our foundation all mapped out and we have our five by five style with no mistakes in it, the next thing we need to do is build some elevation, which basically just means make your build taller. The one thing I'm stressing in this video is we're in a village, and we don't want every building to be a skyscraper, nor do we want this one to be a skyscraper. But since it's the town hall and it's an important building in the village, we want it to be taller than the rest, but not 50 blocks high. We want it to be reasonable and look semi-realistic in our village as a backdrop. We want it to look imposing, but not out of place. Now that we're happy with the height of our build, and it looks good in the village and looks in style, we're now going to connect the foundations together. This is a really easy step, because all we have to do is just fill in the blocks that we've already used. If you see cobblestone, fill in the wall with cobblestone and leave windows and doors where you like, and if it's oak logs, just connect them with more oak logs. Just fill in the gaps, and eventually we'll have a complete shelter, it just won't have a roof. I decided this build is also going to have a small tower overlooking the village square, just in case any pillagers do manage to sneak in, we'll have one way to defend them for now. Next up we're going to pick a place that looks nice for a staircase. I don't have access to scaffolding yet, so I don't want to have to keep placing dirt blocks. So I picked this spot, and I think it's where the staircase is going to go permanently when the build's done. I really like it here, it's out of the way, tucked in the corner but it's easily accessible. But we're doing this so when we add the second story, we can have an easy way to keep getting up and down without needing to place a bunch of temporary blocks to get up and down. Because now we're going to add more elevation. We're going to add the second story. The second story is going to be pretty much the exact same as the first. The oak logs are going to be in the same spot, and right now I'm just testing to make sure the dimensions are correct, which they were. In building, the thing that I am the absolute worst at is making roofs. My roofs are never creative, but palette-wise, I can pick a decent one. I really like the look of the mangrove wood. Since we have the mangrove swamp, that's a relatively new biome so close, I've never used the mangrove wood in many builds, so I'm eager to try it now. But for the roof, pretty much all I did was go to each end of the build and do the most basic triangle pattern you could possibly make with stairs and upside-down spruce stairs. It's really not complicated. But after you got the spruce and the trim done, just go through with the red mangrove wood, or whatever wood you choose to use when you build in the 5x5 scale, and fill it in. It's the easiest part, and it's all satisfying when it's done. 
Next we're going to put a trim on that tower we made. I chose to use smooth stone blocks, since in the blacksmith, which can spawn in villages, it's a block used there, so it's in the villager's palette, and especially the oak one. I thought a cool detail would be to put a campfire right here on top, but for now I decided to leave it unlit. Let me know if you think it would look better if it was lit constantly. I'm not sure. Another crucial tip I can give the new builders is constantly drop down and check how you think it looks. If your build doesn't look too good, just start over, or fix what you don't like. But you have to look at it constantly so you can tell. There's no point in building something if you're not happy with it, because you can do anything. Finally, we're just going to finish off the second story's walls. I used white terracotta like I said before. All I needed was some bones from some fish in the river and then some blocks of clay and then put those in the furnace and you can combine them to make the white. And now we're just going to put some stairs leading up to our tower so it's actually functional. So now we have access to everywhere in the build, which is good. And just like that, we've got the undetailed shell of a starter house. I'm really happy with how it turned out. Let me know what you guys think. I know I said we were going to build in the villager's palette, but I wanted the central point of the village, like the town hall, the town square, to have something that really makes it stand out. And I think the mangrove wood we found from episode one really helps with that. The red roof looks really nice, and once we detail it up, I think this will be a fine starter house. But anyways, that's going to be enough for today's episode. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you tomorrow for episode three. Kingpin out.